I invite you to please join me in prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we are gathered here this day, gathered in your name, gathered by your Holy Spirit. Lord, in the hearing of your word, we receive the gifts that you give us as we meditate upon that word this day. May our lives be filled with the hope that you share with us through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Today I want to be talking, I'm going to talk about hope, about being hopeful. And I know there are all kinds of different ways and things for which we hope. Maybe you hope for a particular Christmas present this year. And, uh, you know, I want to say in that instance, you may hope for that, but it may not come about. Just so you know. Then there may be other things that you hope for that, that you don't have guarantees about those things. Maybe you hope for, you know, maybe a big year-end bonus or something on the job. Maybe you're hoping for a job. Maybe you're hoping that for a good doctor's report. Maybe you're hoping that, you know, good fortune will lie in your future. Maybe you're hoping uh, just for any number of things that come around in your life that you think, man, I just, I just hope that comes, that comes about. And I believe truly we need hope in this world. But I think we need a bigger hope. Hope that's not limited to just the things that we have that maybe are in front of us like a Christmas gift or something like that, but a bigger hope. Because without it, we have discouragement, right? Kind of the opposite. I'm reminded of the story of this um, man that was actually just driving down the road and he, he saw a Little League baseball game going on. So he pulled off to the baseball game and there was one of the kids that was sitting in the dugout. So he walked up behind him and he said, uh, what's the score? And the boy said, 18 to nothing. We're behind. And the man looked at me and said, well, that, you must, I bet you're really discouraged. And he said, why should I be discouraged? We haven't even gotten up to bat yet, right? <laughs> and, I, and I think of that and I think, now that's hope, isn't it? You, you don't know really what's there, but you know you got a chance and you get to come out swinging and you, and you do the best that you can and you just have a, have a, have a new sense of hope in your life. Not discouragement, but hope. You know, when we, when we talk about hope, we get this bigger picture of hope about, about God and the faith that He's given us and, and we talk about faith as the evidence of things hoped for. That's what writers of the Hebrews put it. And we're hoping for the things that are out there we don't yet see, but we know God has promised them to us. And so we hold on to that hope in our lives and know that God has put that inside of us. I hope that nothing can deter. I'm going to focus some of my words today on this Romans 15 passage because I love the way it starts out. It says, whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Scriptures are written so we would have hope. And then the passage continues. He says, I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. And you might read that and you go, well, how does that fit into hope? I'm telling you, that passage is filled with hope. Because it talks about Christ coming to be the servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness. And where we, where we begin to pick up hope is knowing that God's word is true for us. All the covenants, all the promises God made throughout scripture are true for us. You know, you can go back to Abraham where he promised that you will be a great nation. All the families on the earth will be blessed through you. What a promise and it's true for us. We move on down through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and, and, and all the promises that God made through the prophets. And we see that Christ came to be the fulfillment of all those promises. To show again that God's word is true. He promised a Savior. He sent us a Savior. Jesus, when he began his public ministry. We have the account in Luke chapter 4 how he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And he took the scroll of the prophet Isaiah that was handed to him and unrolled it. He, he read from this place. 
The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled back up the scroll and he gave it to the attendant and everybody was looking at him. And he said, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. It's a message of hope. Preach the good news. Proclaim liberty to the captives to recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed. It's all good news. And when Jesus came, when he came to be that servant to the circumcised, to show God's truthfulness, he fulfilled everything that God had promised. And through God's truthfulness, we know that all those promises he made for us are going to come true. That's our hope. We, we have entered into a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ in waters of baptism. When we were called his own, his words were placed upon us, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We received all those promises of God in our lives. And because of God's truthfulness, we know we have hope for a future. And the passage continues. This was to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. That mercy is poured out upon us in our lives. What a glorious thing. I, I, this passage, I love it. I love the way it breaks into praise. I will praise you among the Gentiles. Talking about that promise to us. Sing your holy name. Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the peoples extol him. The root of Jesse will come. Even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. We have hope. It's all because of God's truthfulness and his promises to us in this life. It's an amazing thing. You know, it's, it's far bigger than anything we may hope for in some Christmas present because God has given us already the ultimate present. <laughs> his son Jesus is our savior from sin. So we're people of hope. Because we're people of hope, we have a reason every day. We have a a greater purpose in our life every day to be those people of hope that share that hope with the world around us. That's our purpose. I know sometimes you can get discouraged. Anybody ever get discouraged? Anybody ever been discouraged in here besides me? You can, right? But what God does, he reminds us of his promises every day. He reminds us that he has called us and made us his children. He reminds us we are part of his family. And every day we get up and we're reminded we're God's people. We are special people. And he gives us those good works that he has prepared beforehand for us to do. And he tells us, let your light so shine before men that they may glorify your father in heaven as they see your good works. Every day we have this incredible purpose for God and we have a reason to be hopeful Because God has given it to us by his grace. This particular reading closes out with these words. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. All that hope is wrapped up because we are believers. And that God has given us that ability by the power of his spirit. We know this word. We know the truthfulness of his word. We're lost and condemned people. The truthfulness of his word says he must punish sin. And he, he, he condemns those that are wicked. We heard that in the reading from Isaiah today. But his promise is also that he has forgiven us. We have peace with the Father in heaven. We have joy because of our salvation in our hearts and in our lives. And there is nothing in this world that we cannot face without hope in our lives because God has given it to us. We have hope. Yesterday, we had the funeral here for Lil Ranky and provided her Christian burial yesterday. And I was sharing with uh, just the group that was gathered here, the family and, and the friends that were gathered yesterday about Lil. And I don't know, how, I don't know if you know Lil. I, I, some of you knew her probably her whole life almost. And you know, I'm I'm a I'm a late comer into this thing of, of Lil. And 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 I. You know, I didn't know her back before her stroke, but I, I knew her afterwards, and I knew she was just she was just a lady filled with hope. And she expressed that in many ways. If, if you ever went up to Lil, she's gonna put out her arms and want to hug you, you know. But you know, when I was first pastor here, I didn't I didn't know that you might get a kiss on the cheek with that too, you know. And I I, I went to give her a hug, and I got a kiss on the cheek. I was kind of surprised by that, you know. But that's just the kind of lady she was. She she lived out the hope that God gave her in her life, and and I think about it, she could have just given up. She could have just quit. 
but she didn't. God had filled her with his love and with the hope in believing that gave her joy in her life. And the Spirit shined through her every time at Christmas you go and sit with her and, and she had this little thing, you know, little, little thing I used actually in the sermon yesterday. You pushed the button and it played Silent Night and you'd sit and you'd sing Silent Night with Lil and, and she'd say, play it again because she loved to sing. I think that's hope. That's the one you get a chance to come up and bat. And you come out swinging. Because you got a God of hope in your life. We have the promise he'll never leave us or forsake us. I have another story I want to share with you. It's a story about hope. It reads as follows. The school system in a large city had a program to help children keep up with their schoolwork during stays in the city's hospital. One day, a teacher who was assigned to the program received a routine call asking her to visit a particular child. She took the child's name and room number and talked briefly with the child's regular classroom teacher. The teacher said, we're studying nouns and adverbs in his class now, and I'd be grateful if you could help him understand them so he doesn't fall too far behind. A hospital program teacher went to see the boy that afternoon. That afternoon. No one had mentioned to her that the boy had been badly burned and was in great pain. Upset at the sight of the boy, she stammered as she told him, I've been sent by your school to help you with nouns and adverbs. When she left, she felt she hadn't accomplished much. But the next day, a nurse asked her, what did you do to that boy? The teacher felt she must have done something wrong and began to apologize. No, no, said the nurse. You don't know what I mean. We've been worried about that little boy. But ever since yesterday, his whole attitude has changed. He's fighting back. He's responded to treatment. It's as though he decided to live. Two weeks later, the boy explained that he had completely given up hope until the teacher arrived. Everything changed when he came to a simple realization. He expressed it this way. They wouldn't send a teacher to work on nouns and adverbs with a dying boy, would they? The Lord God would not have sent his son to a bunch of people dying without hope. The Lord God would not have sent his son here if our future was all bleak. If our future did not have his promises. If our future was not to be in his glory. But he did. He sent his son to you and me. Because we're living with hope. So be hopeful. Rejoice. Praise. Give God glory. In the words of the apostle. May the God of hope. Fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Shall we pray? Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you come to us daily with hope. You remind us daily how you have called us and reconciled us to yourself through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we come here today receiving your word of hope. We come here today receiving your word and sacrament, receiving your very body and blood for forgiveness and hope. So, Lord, every day, every day remind us that we have hope because you, Lord, are God of hope and you are our God. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue with the gathering of our offerings.